What is a hero? To me, it's an individual who puts service before self, a person who dedicates their life to helping others. Heroes come in many forms, firefighters, police officers, first responders, and our brave troops. They are the selfless men and women who serve their neighbors, communities, and this amazing country we call America. I'm Dan Ball. I served my country in the United States Air Force. Then I spent 25 years serving the neighbors and communities I lived in by telling their stories. Now I'm on a new mission in life, traveling the country, discovering what fuels these heroes' minds, bodies, and souls. Fire in the hole! This is Hungry Heroes. Folks, on this edition of Hungry Heroes, um, we're doing something a little bit different. We're calling this the homecoming edition. It's the holiday season, and so like many of you, I came home. We're in Archibald, Ohio. It's a town population of 4,300, and it's where I grew up. My entire family is still here. Matter of fact, my insurance agent is still there. That's City Hall. The radio station I started my career cutting commercials in is right there next to the bank. This quaint little community prides itself on being one of the safest, cleanest, and best places to raise a family in the Buckeye State. Like many small Midwest towns, things move at a slower pace. Don't change that much in Archibald. And you know what? That's just fine by me. During this episode, our heroes are the Archibald Police Department. Now, I know what you're going to say. This isn't Chicago. It isn't Los Angeles. They don't have major crime. But these guys are still heroes. They still don the uniform, put the badge and gun on, and walk a beat and protect and serve. We'll be meeting up with the chief of police and several of his officers. Then we'll sit down, break bread with him, and discuss with these heroes what it's like to serve others. But before we do all that, we've got to stop by my favorite restaurant in town. Our first stop on my holiday homecoming has to be this place, folks. I literally grew up inside. Everyone I know from my hometown grew up inside. This restaurant's been here, I don't know, 50, 60 years. It's the local watering hole, it's the sports bar, it's the place with the best burger around. This is Icky's in Archibald, Ohio. Come on in. Oh, look at this place. Nothing changes. Welcome to Icky's. Hey, hey what's up, Mr. Fryman? Hey, How you doing? Good. You still the mayor of this town? Uh, no, not, not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> our mayor of my hometown. DB. What's up, Bobby D? How are you, brother? Nice to see you, brother. Good to see you, Get man. Here. Welcome home, dude. Welcome well, home. Uh, yeah, happy holidays. Thank you. Thank and uh, I think I don't need to look at the menu here. Like we, we, we typically do this show, I gotta have you tell me what I want, but. I know what you want. What do I want? One big ick. Big ick. Maybe and, a uh, cocktail? Whatever your poison is. Yes, sir. Thanks, Bobby. With three generations of family behind the bar, it would be an understatement to call this place a mom and pop business. Growing up here, and still to this day, this is the place to be after a local football or basketball game. DB, you ready to do this? Oh. Just like you like it, baby. Yes. Just like you know it. The big Yes, hit. sir. We got ketchup, mustard. Thank you, sir. I'll take a little of that. And you're going to need these. Uh, yes, I will need napkins. Enjoy, bud. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, so what makes this burger so great? Half pound of flame broiled meat. I love that it's flame broiled. You saw that in the kitchen. Four strips of bacon, but here's the key. Get a close up of that. No sliced cheese on the Big Ick. It's melted cheese. That's what I think gives it the extra special taste. Probably one of the best burgers in Ohio and maybe around. But I'm biased, it's my hometown. So, DB. Tell me about yourself, man. How you been? Been busy, man. I'm, I'm busy. Sure. We've got um, Real America, the talk show. We've got Hungry Heroes, this show, of course, and traveling all the time. How you been? I'm just fine, man. Back home after 30 years. Yeah. You know? Taking over the place. I love it. Nothing, you know what is awesome about this? Nothing changes, but that's good. Because I want to come home and see all the signed tiles and your grandma and grandpa's name above the bar that's been here for 50, 60 years. She's been here since 1966. She's 94 years old. She walks in here every single day. That's amazing. Yep. 94 and grandma's still here almost every day working. Every day. See, now that's an American tradition, folks. Every that's like the day. American dream. They started this place, then your pops took it over. Now you're here, your sisters are here. It's three generations. Correct. And the burger tastes the same, I'm telling you, from when you and I were in high school, hanging out in here after football games trying to pick up girls. <laughs> okay? Do not change the big egg. Ever. And you'll have my business until you and I are 94. I know. Thanks, Thank baby. You, Appreciate it. Now you know why it's called the Big Ick. I am stuffed, but I had to fill up because now 
It's time to go do a little training with the local heroes at the Archibald Police Department. Let's go. On my way out to meet up with our heroes at the Archibald Police Department, I decided to make a detour and look around my childhood home a bit more. And that's when it started to snow a little. And then it snowed a lot. So I thought it'd be best if we parked the bike and find a different mode of transportation. However, in my town of under 5,000 people, you can't just stand on the street corner and hail a cab or text an Uber or Lyft driver. So I had to call in a favor. Thanks for the lift, Marts. Thanks, Paul. It's good seeing you again, buddy. Nice seeing you, brother. Appreciate the ride. Be safe out there. Thank you. <laughs> so as you can tell, we're not on the bike. Had a little issue. It's called snow. So I called an old high school buddy of mine, Jason Martz. Happens to run the street department. If you got to get around town, why not do it in a snowplow? Let's go meet our heroes. Hey, good morning. You Chief Wixom? I am. I'm Dan Ball with Hunger Heroes. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, brother. So I'm so glad that we could do this um, because... This is like a homecoming for you, it, right? It is. It is. You know, we started this show earlier this year. We've been traveling around the country doing military, cops, firefighters, charity groups. So I appreciate you taking the time. Can we talk about real quick before we meet your team, this right here? Because I'm looking at this wall of chiefs. Yes. And I know you just took over a couple years ago, yep, right? Yep, I did. You're the eighth chief. How old is our town? We just turned 150 years old a couple years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the succession of chiefs we have. Um, not very many. That just shows dedication to the job. It does. I mean, some of these guys served for, let, let's count the years here, 21 years as chief. Yes. And obviously they were probably patrolmen before that. I remember some of these faces, by the way. Do you? Were I'm, you in trouble? I'm... I went to school with this chief. There you go. <laughs> Is that old neon sign, is that the one that hung at the original police station yes. downtown for yes, like it is. decades? It is. Let's meet the team. I hear him in the back. All right, let's go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dan. Nice to meet you. Eric. How you doing? Eric? Dan, nice to meet you, brother. Grant, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Dan. Bryce, how you doing, brother? Nate. Nate. Dan, pleasure, guys. Now that we've met up with our heroes at the Archibald Police Department, it's time to get to work. Coming up, we'll check out some of their high-tech surveillance gadgets, and you'll get to see firsthand what it's like to make a life or death call. Archibald PD, come out! After that, we'll sit down for a meal with our heroes and find out what fuels their minds, bodies, and souls. That's all coming up on this special Home for the Holidays edition of Hungry Heroes. Don't go away. Yeah, that was my mother. She's stalking us. <laughs> If you look around, there are heroes everywhere, men and women who risk their lives to protect others. I'm proud to sponsor Hungry Heroes to recognize this passion to protect, defend, and serve. I'm Dave Mortosh. At Mortosh Financial, we protect another aspect of your life, your money. We believe in safety while still getting solid growth and lifetime retirement income if needed. No one wants to outlive their money. Please call the number at the bottom of your screen or go to my website, mortoshfinancial.com. Welcome back to Hungry Heroes. We're going home for the holidays to my childhood hometown, Archibald, Ohio. We stopped by the best place in town to grab a burger and a beer, Icky's Bar and Grill. After shooting the breeze with some lifelong friends, we met up with our local heroes, the Archibald Police Department. Now it's time to hop in the Chief's Cruiser, then gear up and get to work. So Chief, I'm so glad that you picked this wonderful, perfect, bright, sunny, warm, balmy day in Archibald, Ohio. I'm not, I'm not sure who picked this, Dan. <laughs> So how much do you remember about Archibald? So this part, right when you come into downtown, I love. And I love that it's falling, the leaves changing, but all these old historic homes. Yes. Some of these homes have been here since the turn of the century. They have. Maybe before, right? Yes. And barely any of them change. I mean, people may put some new shutters on, a new coat of paint, but they stay the same. And then you come into the downtown part, and yep, it's changed a bit. Love they got the holiday lights up. Christie Motors is still there. I mean, you just don't yep. see this anymore. So many small towns have fizzled out and not made it. And Archibald still is thriving. It's clean. It's safe. It it's is. It's a great little town. It is, for sure. I used to work right there at Lauber's Clothing. Yeah. Yeah. We just went by the old police department. The old police department. That's right. Back there, I remember that. And right there, that used to be the townhouse bar and grill where the McDonald's office is. And I was a busboy and dishwasher there. It was. <laughs> 
All right, Dan, since uh, we showed you around town and you got to go down memory lane. I appreciate that, Chief. Now it's time to work. Oh, that's right. That is part of the show. Yeah. I am supposed to do the job. Right. All right, so, so what are we doing? So what we're going to do is we're going to put you on a bike in this 32-degree uh, weather. That's great. Be part of the community. That's wonderful. Let's, let's pedal the streets of Archibald. I love it. All right. Got a couple of the officers here waiting. Yep. All right. They look thrilled to be out. They should. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! All right, Chief, it's starting to come down. What's next? I know. Man, <laughs> this is Bryce Meyer and Nate Slough. These are hey, hello. Guys. Meyer, nice to meet you. you Nate, yep, we met earlier, guys. You ride bikes in the snow in the winter. We actually do, no matter what. No matter what. All right, let's go. We got All some right, gear here. All right, here's your helmet. One thing you're going to notice about this particular bike is yep. this is a stealth bike. When Ooh, you stealth. When you ratchet, it doesn't make it a sound. Oh. These bikes, because they're the new, the newer model, they don't do that anymore. Okay. But so don't be alarmed if you don't hear the standard click, 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 click right. that you always hear. Here. I got you. I There's got you. nothing wrong with it. Before we started our patrol in my hometown, the officers wanted to make sure I got a quick safety briefing so I didn't make a fool of myself and wipe out in a pile of the white stuff, which actually really started to come down once we hit the streets. Nothing like patrolling the streets on a warm, sunny day in Northwest Ohio. <laughs> So, Bryce, talk to me about why you use the bikes to patrol. I mean, it's a small town, you've got several units, so why the bikes? Well, we use the bikes because it gets us out talking to the kids. Um, more people wave me down on a bike than ever in a patrol car. Yeah. So we have great luck with it, and we give uh, bike awards to the kids for wearing their helmets. Nice. And they love it. But really, we work with a ton with the kids. Yeah. You know, we see a kid with a bike chain off, we'll stop and help him. And do all that I'm doing kind the hand stuff. signal. Good job. <laughs> I'm with cops, man, I know. <laughs> right turn, stop, left turn. That's right. I love this. Yep. This is new, right? Just finished this this year. Um, they did an amazing job. It was actually really cool to watch. You know, working a shift every day, come out and check it out. It's a lot of history of Archbold. Yeah, well, you know, so on my mom's side, we're Souders and we're Roths, so I see the family name up there, too. Yep. That's really cool. Once we finished up our patrol of the downtown area, it was time to head back to the police station, check out some of their high-tech gear the department recently purchased to help out when they have to track a suspect or search for a missing person. Dan, let me show you something else that we have at Archibald. Ooh, that's we have cool. a drone that we have. No. Uh, we use that for search and rescue. Okay. And Grant Schaffner here is our drone pilot. Yep, I remember Grant. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Yep, nice to see you again. Okay, so I would think a small department like this typically would not have something this big and fancy. Usually they don't. Um, we decided to get this. We have a, a large elderly community here in Archibald, and if somebody walks away or we're looking for a missing person, we'll use the drone. Uh, we do also utilize canine, but we don't have a canine uh, program here. Right, you gotta so, call them in. Yeah, we gotta call them in from uh, surrounding agencies. So we'll use the drone in, in that situation. Gotcha, so whether it's a searching for an elderly person who's lost out in a cornfield, yep. or like you were saying earlier on the ride along, you do get suspects, I mean you get crime here, somebody we steals do. a car from the car lot, you can't stick a canine on them, but you can track them with the drone. We can. Yeah, Grant, tell me about this unit, because I've flown one, but it's like the little one that you know my kid has, not this big thing that I'm, I won't ask how much it costs. But so tell me about this. To actually fly it is very simple. Uh, just two joysticks here, and then like the chief said, we have the FLIR camera and just a normal camera on it as well that has zoom capabilities. And that's so FLIR. That's like infrared. It is so you can correct. See, yeah, at night and see, see the see the suspect running around. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. So now here's the very important question: May I fly it? Yeah, as long as chief's okay with it, you can fly it. Yep, we'll let you fly it. I'm insured. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if not, I'll make a donation to the department. <laughs> All right, well, let's All go right, outside. Let's, let's check go it outside out. and get it flying. Cool. I mean, it goes right up smooth even with the wind and the snow. Yeah, it doesn't seem to affect it at all. I thought it would affect it a little bit. The GPS really lets, uh, takes control over it. I need one of those to play with. Yep. <laughs> I mean, but this makes wanna, sense. You wanna, May I? Yes, absolutely. All right. Now, what's the range? So it, 
per the FAA guidelines, it's 500 feet high. That's all, the only higher you can go. Feet. Okay. Right now we're at we're 76. At. Gotcha. I'm gonna take her up to like 200. There we go. Let's go over to Souders. And it'll go about 35 miles an hour as well. Really? And then your speed is right down here. So you can oh, see- Oh wow, it. 26, 27, yeah. And that thing cooks. It does. I'm going to let you land it, even though I know it does it automatically, because <laughs> I don't want to pay the bill. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Coming up, the chief and his officers have one more training exercise for me to complete, and it's a big one. After that, We'll sit down with the men who make up the Archibald Police Department and discover why they've made it their life's missions to serve others. And, oh yeah, my mom finds out I'm in town before I get the chance to surprise her. Yeah, that was my mother. She's stalking us. <laughs> this is Dave Mortash. We're doing it again. We are honored to be working with the Travis Mills Foundation to help injured vets and their families. I believe this is the best run charity for vets that I've ever seen. My wife Sophie and I are matching up to $500,000 in donations to this great foundation. We need your help. Please go to our website, travismillsfoundation.org slash Dave to donate to this great cause. We match your donation immediately. That's travismillsfoundation.org slash Dave. On this Hungry Heroes, we've traveled to Archibald, Ohio, my childhood hometown. We met up with the heroes that make up the Archibald Police Department. But now it's time to get serious, folks. My hometown chief thought I should see firsthand what it's like when an officer has to decide whether or not to use deadly force. All right, chief, so what are we doing next? We're gonna introduce you to our firearms instructor. We have a new training system out and I'll let him explain that to you, but it's called UTM. Um, it's Ultimate Training Munitions. Uh, so this is Isaac Brenneman. Isaac, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. So talk to me about this, cause I'm looking and I'm seeing like a real Glock and some what looks to be real bullets. So what we do is we actually take one of our service weapons, which is the Glock 23, and we outfit it with a barrel and a slide for the UTM rounds. So this right here is a UTM round, okay? This is the projectile that actually hits you, okay? So when they fire this weapon, you actually get struck by the round. It's as close to real life as possible without anybody getting shot. But this looks like, I see color in there. It's like a mini Correct. paintball? Yeah, so it's a, it's a marking round. It's made out of a detergent, but it's similar to a paintball round. Okay. Um, so you can get multiple different colors if you have force on force or if you have the bad guy and the good guy who, who shot who, right. things like that. So you can keep track of whether or not you're effectively training out any kind of force on force incidents, any kind of blue on blue. And you're also reinforcing good habits and taking away negative habits. Uh, because if you do something negative, you're, you're not going to forget it. Just because we're training with these that day, the scenario you have, it may not be that you shoot because not shooting is just as important as when you shoot correctly. Ah, good point. So this, this in essence, I mean, this is some great technology. This could help cut down on accidental shootings. Yes. Where maybe the yes. officer didn't need to shoot. Exactly. Because in this training, they'll realize, okay, I shouldn't have shot. The suspect didn't pose a lethal threat. Exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. We're gonna put you through a scenario, Dan, and see what you do. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, who am I going to be, the bad guy getting shot, no, or I'm the cop? You're, you're going to be the good guy. guy. I'm the good guy. Who's the bad guy? I'm your bad guy. You're the bad guy. Yep. Okay, let's get geared up. All right. After going over a few more safety guidelines, the chief got me outfitted with a specially modified Glock 9mm, and then it was time for me to make that call that every officer dreads. You can announce that Archibald Police Department, please come out. 30 to 31. Go ahead. Respond to 405 East West. Report to a suspicious person inside the building. You're clear. This is the building. That's the doorway. Let's go. Okay. Archibald PD, come out. Archibald PD, come out. What? What happened? Archibald PD, come out. Why? Why are you Show here? me your hands. Show Why? me your hands. Come out. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Ah. Did I hit him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did he hit you? Yeah. I didn't aim. Oh, look at that. Yep, that wasn't a really good side. aim. I couldn't tell. I saw him reaching, but I didn't know what he was reaching for. Yeah. So I waited. I gave you a second, but right. then so when I saw the gun was coming out, yep. so I mean, then training, I had no choice, right? Exactly. Yeah. You had no choice. I waited. It's split I waited. second. That was seriously, uh, that was like one to two seconds. Everybody says you guys have three. Yeah. That was less. It was. Because I, I warned you, I warned you, I warned you. You're feeling for your pocket. Yeah. And obviously, and this is, I think, what, what this just proved to everybody at home is that 
you want to give the person a chance. I'm sure right. an officer never oh, wants to take a sure. life. Right. And so I was giving you a chance. Then I saw the butt of a gun coming out. I wasn't going to wait anymore. Right. In the replay, you can plainly see, I warned the suspect several times and only had a split second to decide whether or not to shoot. And by the way, the chief did not tell me whether or not the suspect had a gun. This was as real as it gets in a training situation. And I got to tell you folks, what an eye-opening experience this was. These are just regular jeans. It's not like you don't see super zero. No, I couldn't and tell you. And an entire yeah. that, that's a that's a compact gun wow. that fits into my, my entire pocket. See that shows you right there, folks. They have a split second to make that decision. Wow. Yeah, I was a little nervous. There we go. I don't think you need that for anything. Look at that, and it, look, that's all that comes out. Yeah. Just that little. That little plastic. Thing. Yeah, that's it. And then it's just really it's a lightweight, empty casing. Now that my training was complete, I wanted to take the department to dinner. They picked the spot, a place filled with nostalgia. It's called Mom's Diner. Before all the cool neon and signs went up, this place was half the size and known as the pizza oven back in my day. A place where on a Friday night, you'd have a hard time finding a seat, but you'd always be able to find a hot slice waiting for you. Hi, welcome to Mom's Diner. Hi, I'm Dan with Hungry nice Heroes. Nice to meet you. So I'm looking for, I hope, a table full of cops. Yeah, right this way. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? Pretty good. Did we order without me? We did. We did. Oh, so sweet of you. I hope it's pizza. It is. It is. So Chief, let's start with you. What got you into law enforcement? Why did you say this is a job, a career, a life that I want to be part of? I enjoyed public service and uh, wanted to serve my community. Being a smaller community, uh, everybody knows us. You know, we know people, they see us on the street, they know our names. In 2005, when I was at the Sheriff's Office, I had an opportunity when I was working second shift, uh, a three-year-old boy had fallen through the ice uh, and I was less than a mile away and so I got there, we did CPR, and we saved his life. And I just attended, this year, attended his wedding. Wow. I don't know if people understand how stressful this job can be. It may not always be in a small town, but it's still a stressful job. Anytime you go up, right? For any type of call, traffic stop, whatever. My first call ever off FTO was a suicidal subject that barricaded himself in his house, shot at me and the SRT, and then ended up taking his own life. So even though we live in a small community, um, anything like that can turn, um, because everybody's dealing with their own demons, everybody's dealing with their own problems. You don't know uh, on that suspicious person call if it's gonna spiral into something or if it's just someone who's had a bad Friday and just needs someone to talk to. So you just have to be aware of that no matter which direction that the call goes. Working in Archbold and living in Archbold has been wonderful for me and my family. There's been so much community support. We had a personal tragedy earlier this year. The support we got, there's probably people I don't even know who to thank for it. And it's just, you know, having that hometown-ness and yeah. not being part of a community for so long, that this is a good community to be part of. You know, there, there's nothing that makes your day and puts a smile on your face quicker than, than having young kids come up and to think you're great. You know, and even if it's just the uniform, they don't know me. To know that they know the uniform stands for something, mm. um, that, that really warms your heart. You think you'll be the next chief maybe in 20 years? Because, you know, <laughs> all these chiefs do 20 to 30 years as chief. Well, I got so a, he's going to be there for a while. I got a lot of the senior guys ahead of me that are really good cops, so a lot of competition. <laughs> these guys um, that I have on my department are really good at what they do uh, for this community. After my time hanging with the Archibald Police Department, I've got a renewed appreciation for what cops do on a daily basis. Whether they're cruising the streets of a big city or peddling downtown in a small quaint town like Archibald, they all take the oath to serve and protect their communities. And my hat's off to them for their service. It was also great just being home, running into some of the old gang, getting to eat at some of my childhood favorite places, and of course, seeing family. All the names I know, we all knew. <laughs> Hi, Mom, I'm working. I'll see you later. I'm working. Hi, Mom. Jeez. Yeah, that was my mother. 
She's stalking us. <laughs> so Chief, uh, our time has ended in my hometown of Archibald. Guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate you hanging out with us, showing me the ropes of the Archibald PD. You're welcome. And this is by far my favorite part of the show. My bosses at One America News, the Herring Broadcasting family, each and every episode donate $5,000 to the heroes that I profile. So whether it's cops, firefighters, military, charity, nonprofit groups, you get five grand, sir. Use it for the department. Help keep my hometown safe. We will. Thank you very much. Appreciate you very much. You guys, take care. God bless you. Thank you. On the next Hungry Heroes, horses and heroes will travel to White House, Ohio to meet up with an Air Force veteran who combines her love of horses with helping to heal the unseen wounds of our heroes back from battle. We'll check out a few local hotspots that our heroes love to dine at and go country down on the ranch with the heroes who make up the nonprofit group Hooves. That's all next time on Hungry Heroes. See y'all then.